Hi everyone, well thanks for stopping by this week. This week's video is going to be a little different. So I'm going to kick it off with an overview of Nakamichi the company. And then in the middle, I'll come in and talk about my specific 1000 ZXL here and cover the market about that a little bit. And then after that, I've sort of created a bit of a commercial and it's going to focus just on the 1000 ZXL for this segment. And at the end, we're going to look at a viewer system. So let me know what you think about this format. We'll see you shortly. Nakamichi Corporation began its journey in 1948 as Nakamichi Research Corporation in Tokyo. Initially, a research and development firm specializing in electronics and optics, the company quickly set its sights on revolutionizing audio technology. In the 1950s, Nakamichi developed one of Japan's first open reel tape recorders under the Magic Tone brand. By 1957, it was producing its own magnetic tape heads and introduced the Fidela, a groundbreaking three-head open reel stereo tape deck. The 1970s marked a turning point. As the world moved from reel to reel to cassette tapes, Nakamichi seized the opportunity. In 1972, the company began selling products under its own name and introduced the world's first three-head cassette deck. The Nakamichi 1700, launched in 1973, offered dual cap stand drives, Dolby B noise reduction, and adjustable record head azimuth, features that set new standards for cassette decks. Nakamichi's innovations extended to portability with the 550, a battery-powered cassette recorder designed for high-quality field recordings. Its versatility made it a favorite among professionals. Throughout the late 1970s, Nakamichi refined its product line, introducing updates like the 1002 and 702. These cassette decks incorporated advanced mechanics and electronics, catering to audiophiles and setting benchmarks in sound quality. In the 1980s, Nakamichi pushed the boundaries further with the 1000ZXL, a computing cassette deck capable of self-calibration for different tapes. Priced at $3,800, it represented the pinnacle of analog audio engineering. For those seeking even more, Nakamichi offered the limited edition 1000ZXL with a gold-plated faceplate. Then came the Dragon, a masterpiece of engineering. It featured Nakamichi automatic azimuth correction, ensuring optimal sound for every recording. The RX series, followed with UDAR, an elegant mechanism that physically flipped the cassette for auto-reverse playback while maintaining perfect tape alignment. Nakamichi wasn't just about cassette decks. Its stasis amplifiers, developed in collaboration with Threshold, brought high-end sound to home audio systems, in the automotive world, Nakamichi's TD-1200 cassette receiver featured Dragon-level performance and its collaboration with Toyota brought premium sound systems to Lexus vehicles. By the 1990s, Nakamichi had embraced the digital age, introducing innovative single-slot CD changers and venturing into home cinema audio systems. The brand continued to evolve while staying true to its heritage of precision and performance. From pioneering cassette technology to redefining audio excellence, Nakamichi's historical product line remains a testament to innovation. Today, it continues to inspire, delivering sound that resonates across generations. Well, as you can see, I kicked it off a little bit differently this week. I thought I would sort of mix things up a bit. So if you've made it this far, thank you guys for hanging in there. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, it was all about Nakamichi last week. And I had said I was going to do some separate videos for individual units. And so that's what this week is about. I'm going to focus on the 1000 ZXL. So following this segment, I'm going to cover basically a bit of an overview of the 1000ZXL, so stay tuned for that. 
And at the end of the video, I'm going to showcase a viewer system. And it's one that is, you know, specific to this segment. So I think you'll want to stick around for that as well. Um, before I get into this, um, take the time to give us a thumbs up if you can, if you appreciate the video. If you don't want to miss the next ones, uh, you know, subscribe and, uh, you know, hit that notification bell if you want to be notified. So let's talk about the 1000 ZXL. So my units, I have two, by the way, and I bought them from the same owner, the original owner, quite a number of years ago. And I bought them in Idaho. Uh, that is on the other side of the country from where I live, which is in North Carolina. So I flew to Idaho and uh, bought the, the system and components out there and then drove them for three days across the country. So uh, if it's something I'm interested in, yeah, I'll go far and wide and, uh, and, and pick them up to add them to my collection. So that's the furthest I've ever gone. And um, it uh, was an exciting trip and I've, I've do I documented it the whole way. And so maybe one day I'll make a picture book for my, uh, my desk, uh, my coffee table or something. But the, um, the collectible market for these, so the 1000 ZXL was the top of the line model in 1980. Um, this preceded the Dragon. So these were top of the line from I think 80 to 82. And what a, I guess I would say a tour de force of technology is within this box. Nakamichi, you know, was, was really looking for making a statement piece and they did it uh, with the 1000 ZXL. Uh, everything, every technology that they had, they put into this uh, box. Now, the Dragon specs are a little bit higher, but I don't know that you can actually hear the difference. Uh, maybe if you have, you know, some extremely keen hearing perhaps, but um, it's, it's marginal. Now, what is definitely different about the Dragon is that it's in a much more, I'll say, newer form factor. Uh, this fit what was the prior form factor of their top of the line, the, the regular 1000 uh, Model 2, version 2. Um, so I guess they had a lot of room to put a lot of technology in here and, and uh, squeeze it all in. But at the moment, in this time, uh, point in time, the collectible market is uh, a bit feverish for I'll say cassettes. Uh, cassettes seem to be having renewed interest in, the, in a similar way that vinyl did. Not sure if it will last as long as vinyl has, but at the moment, this moment, uh, there does seem to be um, gaining additional interest month over month in cassettes and in top of the line models. So currently, these are selling um, in the used market for anywhere from 2,500 to 3,500 for units that are not restored. Um, obviously that depends on condition, location, how they're selling it, a lot of factors there, but in restored condition, they are upwards of around 5K at this point. So these will, I think, continue to appreciate uh, over time as the market continues to have interest in cassettes, of course. Um, there is a uh, limited version of this. Uh, it was called the 1000 ZXL Limited. It was a made to order uh, special um, unit that was completely gold plated on the front and it has a lot of bling. Um, it has some internal uh, upgraded parts as well and the specs on that one were slightly higher. Again, would you be able to probably hear it audibly? Mm, you know, I don't know. But nonetheless, that unit, uh, those units uh, being that there are so few of them and there aren't any numbers out there that say how many units were made, but it's a small number. And because of that, those units are selling anywhere of upwards of 10K at this point. Again, that assumes it's in you know, pretty good shape, but I'm going to make the assumption that in most cases, because they were special order, they probably landed in the hands of folks who knew what they were and, and took care of them. I haven't seen one that's abused, let's say, in, in any of the um, online transactions that I've seen. But uh, the 1000 ZXLs, uh, quite uh, not, I don't think they're nearly as popular or have the volume of units that the Dragon has. When the Dragon came out, I can recall it hitting the airwaves on talk shows and things. It did seem to have a lot of momentum all on its own and got a lot of media attention versus the 1000 ZXL. So because of that, uh, I think there were quite a number of units made. So there are a lot of units in the marketplace. Now they are continuing to gain value as well, but because of the little bit more rarity, I think of the 1000 ZXL, uh, these seem to have had a bit of a premium uh, for some period of time. So uh, I don't think, I don't foresee that 
diminishing anytime soon. Uh, so if you find one, uh, take note of it. If you're a collector, um, and if it's, you know, it's a, a good price, you're going to want to get it um, because, again, they're hard to find and you know, strike while the iron is hot. Um, on getting these things repaired, now at this point, uh, they're, due to age, there are some issues with some capacitors that need to be replaced. Uh, they need a little bit more than the typical just belts and alignment. If it needs more than that, uh, you need to find a specialist. These are extremely complex um, because of this um, sort of computing technology that they put in here. It needs someone who is well versed in uh, the internals of these and can get in there and address you know, any issues that it might be having. So uh, there are a number of specialists around the country. Uh, so you know, do your research and, and, and seek them out and then uh, make sure that they get the proper attention. And if you do that, uh, you're going to have a unit that not only plays very well, um, it's also going to significantly increase its value. Um, so I think that'll do it for this segment. Uh, stay tuned for the upcoming uh, review, overview of this unit, and hang around to the end uh, to see um, the viewer system this week. Once in a while, a statement piece is born. Something that redefines the category and sets new benchmarks for what is possible. Something so groundbreaking, it is still talked about over 40 years later. From the very beginning, Nakamichi's vision was clear, to push the limits of cassette recording technology. In 1973, the Nakamichi 1000 was introduced to the world, the first cassette recorder to feature three discrete heads. It achieved what no other could, a remarkable 20,000 Hz frequency response. It set the gold standard for cassette decks in the 70s. But the quest for perfection didn't stop there. Enter the 1980s, an era of technological breakthroughs and bold innovation. The Nakamichi 1000 ZXL was born. If Nakamichi amazed the audio world with the 1000, it created a tectonic shift with the 1000 ZXL, throwing out the old and reinventing it with the latest technology available. The Nakamichi 1000ZXL redefined what's possible in cassette recording. With an extended bandwidth response reaching 25,000 Hz, it achieved sound reproduction that rivaled studio quality reel-to-reel -reel decks. This is a recorder built not just for the period's premium tapes, but was ready for tapes of the future. At the heart of the 1000ZXL lies groundbreaking innovation. Able azimuth, bias, level, equalization. It transformed the recording process. Simply load your tape, press play, and ABLE takes over. It calibrates azimuth, bias, EQ, and level with absolute precision, ensuring optimal performance tailored to the exact tape in use. No guesswork, no compromises, just perfection. And then there's RAM. Random Access Music Memory. This allows you to locate and play up to 15 tracks in any order, forward, reverse, or random. It's precision reimagined, giving you complete control over your listening experience. Mechanically, the 1000ZXL is a marvel of engineering. Its asymmetrical dual capstan system ensures absolute tape stability, eliminating flutter and maintaining perfect tension. Every component, every detail of the 1000ZXL is crafted with one goal, to deliver sonic perfection. Playback and recording amplifiers are directly coupled to the heads, utilizing advanced double NF equalization for an open, transparent sound. It's a design philosophy that ensures no nuance is lost, no frequency overlooked. And for the audiophile seeking the pinnacle of luxury, Nakamichi created the 1000ZXL Limited Edition. It was adorned in gold-plated finish. It represented the ultimate combination of form and function, a statement of timeless sophistication. The Nakamichi 1000ZXL is more than a cassette recorder. It's a work of art, a legacy of innovation, and a symbol of excellence. It stands as a testament to Nakamichi's unwavering commitment to pushing boundaries and redefining what was possible in audio technology. The Nakamichi 1000ZXL a cassette recorder in a class by itself.
All right, so this week we're going to showcase Martin from Berlin, Germany. And Martin has sent in a picture of his Nakamichi System 1. Now the System 1, as you can tell, was meant to be mounted into its own specific rack. And look how cool that is. Everything was meant to fit together into these rollable racks and, you know, form fit um, different than your typical rack system. Um, so these were quite cool. I, I sort of think about these as the Bang & Olufsen of Japan, if you will. They were very cool systems that uh, Nakamichi put out for a number of years. Don't know exactly what years they started, but uh, these were the latter part of the 70s. And Martin has his system here, and he's got uh, three components that he's uh, mentioned. One is on th the top here. Well, on the very top, it looks to me like there's a timer at, up, the, up at the top part. But below that is the 600 um, version 2 of the cassette deck. And then there's, it's underneath that in the middle, it's a 630 preceiver, which is a tuner and a preamp combination. And then on the bottom, it's the power amp, and that's the 620. So Martin uh, used this quite a bit from the, from the very beginning. Uh, he still uses it on occasion. Mostly he's leveraging the power amp because he said it's quite good and he's certainly uh, still appreciating how good it sounds. So I appreciate you sending that in, Martin. Um, if anyone else wants to send in some pictures, please do so and uh, send a little bit of an overview of, about it and I'll try to get it on a future episode. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. If you don't want to miss the next video, hit subscribe. As always, see you next time.